Hey everyone, I just finished installing the fresh air supply lines for my Aerosport products overhead console and I wanted to show you all how it laid out. So here's the system as a whole. Um, it's kind of hard to get a good angle with all the cross bars and whatnot in there. But uh, we're actually going to start down on the side skins here. The first thing I had to do was cut NACA vents into the fuse side skins uh, just behind the baggage door here. Uh, the way I did that is I made up a little tag board template uh, using the, the NACA vent outlets in the front of the fuselage, made that transfer to back here, cut that out with a Dremel and some files and whatnot. Um, I ended up spacing it, I went 10 inches back from this skin line here to right there, and then I centered it between these two rivet lines here. It's also going to be parallel to this rivet line here. Um, when the plane's on the ground, that rivet line's actually going to be tilted a little bit. Uh, but, you know, this is going to be, you know, these are the closest reference lines. So I figured it'd look good if it was parallel to those. Uh, then, uh, right now, I've got the plastic NACA vent backers just taped in place. I'm waiting until I can make, uh, get a bunch of stuff that needs to be pro sealed together and do all that at once. Uh, then from the backers, we've got two inch scat tube that runs up. I've got it zip tied up to the J channel here. Then the scat tube runs forward into the Aerosport Products NACA vent valve. And I'll show you what this valve does. What this valve is, is basically it's two, it's a pair of aluminum tubes, two inch aluminum tubes with a butterfly valve in the middle. Let's see if we can't get in there. And those butterfly valves are controlled by a servo in the center here. And what this is going to allow me to do is I'll have a knob up on the, on the console and I'll be able to open and close these butterfly valves. That's going to allow me to shut off the air supply to the overhead console or you know, open it wide open. Uh, in Minnesota it can get a bit brisk in the winter so you probably don't want your overhead console pressurized with you know, that frigid arctic air. So in the winter, shut that down. You, if you have any leaks or you know, just don't want that whole big carbon fiber console you know, full of freezing cold air, you shut it up and you're good to go. Uh, in the summer, open it wide open, you're still going to get great flow. Um, and even in the summer, you may want to shut it partially just to slow that airflow down so you get kind of a, a smoother, you know, still high volume, but less, less of that jet pressure air right in your face when you open up the overhead vents. So um, that's the overhead uh, valve is, uh, I've got it riveted to the center J channel here. I actually ended up using, or actually reusing some of the stock vans fuel pump brackets. These would normally sit flat on the, the belly skin in the, in the forward tunnel uh, and the fuel pump gets uh, clamped onto this. Uh, I, I went with a different setup for my fuel pump system so I had a couple of these laying around and it actually ended up working perfectly as a bracket for this system. So that, that little bracket's just riveted onto the J channel there. Got a couple of nut plates over here. Uh, put, put two holes in this uh, center piece of aluminum and that's going to be screwed into place. It's nice and secure and it's removable in the future if I need to. I'll still have access to be able to get in here with a, a bucking bar to rivet when the time comes to put the top skins on. And then from the from the, the valve we just run another small piece of two inch scat tube up to the two inch NACA adapters. Um, these are, there's two adapters, one for each side, and these are put on the baggage bulkhead and almost tight against the center uh, support there. Um, I did have to notch out the, the flange of this adapter to clear the nut plates that were in place, but the other three holes all worked perfectly. And then on the other side here, come around here, stole an idea from Bob Leffler's site. He had a nice picture showing how he did, had his overhead set up. Oops, can't focus here. And what he did, and I stole is that you can just kind of cut out the flange right around that lower nut plate there. It's a little hard to see just because of my lighting in here. But then you can use the stock 
uh, the stock holes in the flange of the adapter. So that worked nicely. Um, once I had those in place and match drilled, I came, uh, used the adapters, drew a hole with a magic marker and came back, cut those open with a stepper bit and uh, cleaned it up with a, a Dremel. Now the overhead console actually has a flange on the back that's going to come down here across and up. Um, I'm probably going to have some sort of weather stripping to kind of keep that tight, uh, airtight up there. But you'll see that there is a, a nut plate here and a nut plate here that are two of the holes that would normally hold the, the back access panel in place. Now since that overhead console is going to come down and cover those up, I probably won't even end up using those. Uh, we'll just slide that cover up underneath the overhead console and uh, there'll be plenty of other nuts to hold that in place. So, so that's the overview. It ended up going a lot faster than I thought it would and uh, I think it's going to turn out nicely. Thanks for watching.